Hello, this is Jeremy Morgan and I'm going to do a small tutorial on XSLT style sheets. As you can see here we have a basic XML file that contains a list of movies that all belong in a collection. And within this collection we have three movies here and each of those has an attribute. Now if we just bring this up in a regular web browser it doesn't look very good. As you can see it just prints out each one of those. Now what we're going to do is create an XLST style sheet so it's going to style the data a little bit better and you can actually apply formatting and all kinds of other things to it. So one of the first things we're going to need to do is put in a reference in the XML that's going to point it to the style sheet that we're going to create. We create the XML style sheet tag with an href to wherever we're going to put it. We're going to call this one movies.xsl. And we also need to specify a type, which will be text slash xsl. And then we want to close the tag. Now, what this does obviously is points it to a movies.xsl file so we need to create one of those. Now in our movies xsl file we're going to want to put in our opening xml tag and I'm just copying and pasting this part of it. And we also want to put in an XSL tag named stylesheet, which shows the version and the namespace that we're going to be using. Now this is the very beginning of the XSL stylesheet. And one of the things you'll note is that every tag needs to be closed. So we'll close it. Forgive my bad typing, it's always horrible when I know people are watching. If you just have one unclosed tag, generally it'll throw an error. So next thing we want to do is put in another XSL tag called template. Now what this does is specifies a template. We only have one group in here, and that group is collection, but if we had multiple groups, say if you wanted to put in a CD collection or, or, or just about anything, you can actually do that all in the same XML file, and then you can use this XSL file to build certain templates for certain types of data, so you can do different formatting with different things, and it's, it's really pretty nice. So this template we're going to use with the collections, we'll put match and this is an XPath query here, collection. And now it knows to deal with everything in the collection group. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put everything into this this one template, but you don't have to put in, basically I'll explain it, we're going to put in our HTML tags and our body tags, but you actually don't have to do this with each template. You can have separate templates for separate type of data and then wrap all of those in an HTML if you'd like. But since we're doing it all with this one template, we'll just do it all right here. And again, every tag has to be closed. So within our body tag, the first thing we're going to do is create a for each loop. This might sound familiar to you, if you're a programmer, so you'll already know what a for each loop does. So basically what this says is for each movie we're going to do whatever's in here. And it will go through each of these movies, which in this case is three, and do this. So what we'll do is we'll just print out some values. And what we do is use XSL 
value of and then the select again we're doing another select so for the first one we'll do title and we'll want to close this tag now if you remember in here we have title gear and genre so we'll go ahead and put that in what this should do is print out each of the values which we already have that in our browser right now so to make it a little different we'll put some breaks after each one and we'll see what it looks like now as you can see now we have breaks after our list so we can start to do a little bit of formatting with this and we'll go ahead and put it into a table Okay, now I paused it and restarted it after typing in all this table code to make the video as short as possible. And this is basically our table with our first table row, full table headings that say title, genre, and year. There's our for each loop again, and then within that for each loop, we just did a table row, table row with some table items. And we'll save that. And now we have a nice little table. And you can't see it on the screen here, but the URL is actually just pointing to the movies.xml file. So if you have an XML that you're using for a feed or something like that, and you want to create kind of a custom look and a, a real nice look to it without sacrificing the, uh, the XML integrity, you can do that. And most feed readers will still read it just like regular XML, but the browser will come up like this and you, you can have something that looks nice and looks fancy maybe even put some ads in there if you'd like and it's very simple um, just to go over it again we have our movies XML file we're calling out an XSL file which is our style sheet and we claim out the XML version the style sheet version and namespace and then we have an XSL template that matches collection and within there we've put in HTML and we've used an XSL for each loop that selects movie which would be our next one down and then we take XSL value of and we select title genre and year it's very simple and this is actually just scratching the surface of what XSLT style sheets can do um, they're very powerful and I've seen entire websites built off of them and it's very simple and something you can learn that will probably come in handy someday.